guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about what do medical coders study and what is a realistic time frame for how many hours are needed to study. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys. <laughs> Sometimes when I do these videos and I'm giving the message of my experience, what I've been through. I, I've been a medical coder for 16 years, right? I did the math <laughs> just recently again. I did the math, 16 years of my life, I've done this, right? And I am not a shortcut person. I am not a person who wants to get through things really quickly, which is why you don't see me on Tiki Talk, which is why you don't see me um, doing these little quick videos, because I just, I can't, I can't. And to me, it just does a disservice um, to the industry when things are so quick and you can't learn this fast. You, you can't. Okay. Um, but I did get this message today that gave me pause. I mean, I actually thought about it. Like, do the videos that I put out, are they so out there that it just doesn't make sense? That's why people ask me these questions. So let's just get to the question and then I'm going to show you Okay, I'm not going to show the book spacing, but I am going to show you like together what it looks like. All right, because I think that maybe that might help some people to understand that even though my message, I'm on my own little drum beat over here. <laughs> I don't watch any other channels. I only pay attention to my channel and I pay attention to like other channels that I watch like uh, Rick from his channel, Think Like a Horse. I, I adore Rick, <laughs> but Rick is very blunt. I, I like um, Longhorn Lester. I like I'm a Survivor Sanctuary. I like From Suits to Boots. I like Shirtless Jake's Homestead. I like, um, you know, all, all these ones, you know, Bree. I can't think of uh, Bree's channel right at the top of my head. Uh, Life on Marl Hill. Okay. Those are the ones that I watch. All right. And I, I pay attention to those channels, nothing to do with health information, nothing to do with coding, but I pay attention to those. I, I do my own thing. I say my own thing. I come up with my, own, with my own content. All right. So a lot of the things that I say may be different from what you hear. And I know it's really different from a lot of these schools because I look up when I'm doing my research, you know, and people are asking me about these different programs and things and they're promising that you can <laughs> learn medical billing and coding in two months, four months. And people think that this is something that is like, oh, you can just do it on the weekend. You can just study for a couple of hours here and there. When that's really not the case, if you really want to set the person up for success, which I do, right? I do. Um, and I tell you guys 20 hours per week and I always get so many him and and hawing emails about, oh, well, it's not possible. Yes, yes, it is. Even with a full-time job, family, kids, it's possible. But let me get to this comment and then we're going to get into it. So here we go. All right, so the viewer says, I read your answer to the zero experience, but could I pass the CCS? CCS is the gold standard medical coding credentials. That is a certified coding specialist from the American Health Information Management Association. This says that you have mastered inpatient coding and outpatient coding, which makes no sense to you as a brand new medical coder, right? But it is the mastery medical coding certification. That is hands down the most in-demand medical coding certification out there. Of course, there's four main ones that they're always looking for, but the CCS is considered the gold standard because it is the mastery. Just a little side note there, All right? So it goes on to say, but could I pass the CCS if I studied from six to eight hours per day for a couple of months? Question. Your answer was no. Of course it was my answer. <laughs> um, I have essentially the same question. But my time frame for intensive study would be more like six months. I've worked in a hospital in registration and in insurance setting for about eight years. And I want to make the change to coding. And I'm out um, for a little while, um, for about six months, and I'm ready to study like mad. All right. 
six months, six months, probably didn't hear me about the 20 hours per week. Probably did not hear that part. Okay. Um, and, and when you are taking time off like that, there's other things that are happening. It's not just that, you know, you're at home all day. You're doing other things that's requiring you and your time and your energy. All right. And it's going to, you're going to be tired and you're going to be, you know, all these other things from all these other things that you're doing on top of studying. Now, granted, it's nice to have that, that, that solid squirreled away time where you're not doing anything. You're not working at the time and you're able to do that. That's, that's nice to have that time to fully concentrate. But here's the thing. Okay. Let me show you one at a time. One at a time. This is your CPT book. I'm not showing y'all the way that it looks like title of the page because it's backwards. It's my phone. It doesn't have a mirror thing. And no, I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> so I'm not tech savvy. So, but this is, this is what your CPT book looks like. Okay. This is all your outpatient procedures. Okay. That's just, that's just one book. Okay. You need three, but you want to talk about the CCS. Okay. So that's one book that you need for the CCS. This is the ICD-10 PCS. This is your inpatient procedures. Another thick book. Okay. Another thick book that you got to learn. These are two different coding systems in these two procedure books, two different ones. And then you have your diagnosis coding book, okay? Which is this, this big girl right here. <laughs> uh, this one right here, this big book. You have to learn all of these. And you wanna do this in six months. All right, so that gives you two months per book. Two months per book, okay, right? Because you're, you're going to study like mad, right? And you're going to do all these things, right? So you're going to be working with these three coding systems, three different coding systems, and you're going to be using two at a time, okay? Because you have your diagnosis and you have your procedures. And then you have to understand the difference between inpatient procedures and outpatient procedures. So you're going to be using two books at a time, that diagnosis book and either the CPT book or the ICD-10 PCS book, okay? Then here's your workbooks. Now, this is a CPC study guide from 2019. This is still what I recommend anyway, if you're doing your self-study, um, because it's a fantastic book. Even though I'm all the way with the HEMA, I still recommend this book because it's really great. You don't have to get the 2019 book. You can get a newer book. You can get the current year book, but I, like I've said, I'm trying to save y'all money, even though <laughs> you'll still go against me and be like, no, I want to get the current year. You want to get 2024? And 2023, there's maybe... 10% changes in there, if that, but you go right ahead. You go right ahead. So you see this book? This is your, C your CPC study guide, even though you're sitting for the CCS. You can still use this book. And now it doesn't look intimidating. Oh, but trust me, <laughs> you have scenarios in here. You have really good uh, multiple choice, but you, could, you need to cover up those multiple choice so that you can start looking up the codes and knowing without having to be dependent upon the, um, the multiple choice because the real world is not multiple choice. So here's your one book. Here's the other book. Okay. This is to learn evaluation and management. I know it's backwards. Don't comment about it. <laughs> Do not come for me in these comments about this book being backwards. This is how you're going to learn evaluation and management. Now, if you haven't already heard evaluation and management, is its own bear. Okay. Now that CPT book that I showed y'all, the first book that I showed, um, that's going to have all your codes in it. This is going to be your workbook. You can get this from Optum. Again, it's not intimidating, but it is still a lot to read because there's a lot of things going on in this book. There's lots of different levels you got to learn about. Then you want to learn about ICD-10 CM, your diagnosis coding and your ICD-10 PCS. Here's the book. This is by Nellie Leone Chisholm. This is the absolute holy grail of uh, coding workbooks that I absolutely love. It's by Nellie Leone Chisholm. Like I said, this is a fantastic book. This is the best book that you can get to learn ICD-10 CM and ICD-10 PCS. This is better than all the other ones out there. It doesn't matter who made it, okay? This is the number one book. This is what I use to help me to learn. So you have this big book to work through. It's got all of these scenarios in it. So you're learning all those. We're learning to work with them, learning to look up the codes. And you're working with these workbooks, all three of these workbooks. Not only that, in here, 
there's a whole list in the, in the back of this book, right? It's not the 2023 you're going to be working with. It's going to be the 2024. But in the back of this book, there's 388 procedures for you to look up. So that way you can get familiar with ICD-10 PCS. Because believe me, this is no picnic. <laughs> this is no picnic. It was difficult even for me when I was studying it um, back in uh, 2021. Now, I kept the CCA, which says I know how to do inpatient and outpatient coding. I kept that for 13 years because I was, you know, on my mission <laughs> to set people straight about that credential and it worked. There's a lot of people that changed their minds about what the CCA could do uh, because it's entry level. You know, and a lot of people say, oh, it's entry level. Oh yeah, it's entry level, yes. Um, but it still has the most comprehensive domain list of all the medical coding certifications it's got more domains even than the ccs so you have to know a lot in or in order to be considered entry level and you have to have that competency and that understanding so i got my certification for the first time the cca i got it back in uh, 2008 so in uh 20 uh 2021 when i went and sat for my ccs um i have a lot of things going on in the background i had to change my credential so CCS I got in uh, 2021 and I use this book to help me to study because I have lots of outpatient coding experience but I have no inpatient coding experience like actual work experience I know enough to get around I know how to answer the questions in the book I have book you know book <laughs> experience all day long but I don't have um, like real world actual experience but I know enough to get around and I know enough to help people okay so that's all that matters. But again, uh, that took me six months for me to prepare myself because I had taken the CCSP in March of 2021. And then in November was when I took my CCS. So all those months, except for the month of October, because I stopped studying in like late September. Um, but all of those months I spent studying so that I could be prepared. Of course, I did well. I passed. But Somebody that's coming in with just insurance and registration experience, that's not going to be enough. Even people that are nurses that make the transition have even said, Blue, I had no idea how hard this was. I thought it was going to be easy. There's a lot of people that think that medical coding is easy and something that you can do in your spare time. But there's so much that we have to know. I can't believe how much I have to stress this. You know, we have to know what doctors know while never having gone to medical school. And I'm not telling you this to discourage you from pursuing your dreams. I want you guys to be prepared. I want you guys to know, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this right. And I'm going to make sure, make sure not only that I know all these books here, but also that I study medical terminology, anatomy, pathophysiology, and pharma. Those are your bases that you got to know too. Oh, and by the way, you got to know about HIPAA, the OIG. You got to know about reimbursement, RVUs. You got to understand what that means. You got to understand what MSDRG means and what DRGs mean and what is the difference between MSDRG and DRG. You got to know what that means. You got to know what present on admission means. You have to know um, about all these things. You got to know about sequencing. You got to know about the guidelines because... Every single one of these books has guidelines in it. You know, you have your ICD-10-CM coding guidelines. You have your CPT guidelines, your surgery guidelines. And you have your global surgery package guidelines that you got to know about. And then you got your ICD-10-PCS guidelines you got to know about. Again, the only reason that I'm telling you guys is because this person wants to be able to study and wants me to be able to say that you can do this in six months. No. I will never say that you can learn this in six months. It does not matter how much experience you think you have coming into this. You need nine months, 12 months, or 18 months. And the only reason that I say that, and, and even people have told me, you know what, Blue? I actually think that nine months is too fast. Nine months is really fast. You are like foot on the gas the whole time. <laughs> you are just like study, 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 study. 20 hours per week, you know, and you want to do it in a shorter time, that's putting a lot more pressure on you as the student, okay? And this is not to even to consider, you know, if, if you're you're thinking about, okay, well, you know, maybe I shouldn't take the CCS, maybe I should take something else. You know, there's all these other alternatives out there 
But the thing is, you know, you want to take something as serious as a CCS, then you have to bring in serious energy. Okay? Because for nine months, if you're studying 20 hours per week for nine months, that is 720 hours, right? 720 hours. But if you were to shorten that to four months, right? Doing 20 hours per week, that's only 320 hours hours who do you think is going to be more confident and more competent of the two coders who do you think is going to be more competent the person who's doing 320 hours or the person who's doing 720 hours a minimum which one the one who's doing 720 hours because that's how much time you need and if you're staying at home and this is all you're doing day in and day out, you may be able to do this. You may be able to like, okay, this you're concentrating, that's it, and yeah, that's all you're doing. And that's wonderful for you. But you are in a um, you are the exception and not the rule. You are the exception and not the rule. I did tell this person you can go right ahead and try. Go right ahead. Because again, I don't know you. I don't know if you are going to catch on to all this stuff or not. I don't know when the last time it was that you were in school. I don't know what kind of program you're going to go through. I don't know if you're going to use my independent study list to help you study. I don't know what you're planning on doing. So I don't know what you're working with. But I will say this, though. My independent study has worked for people. Nurses at that. <laughs> and other people who have no medical background have told me that they have used my independent study and they've been able to pass CCS, uh, CCA, uh, CCSP, CPC exams. So it works. It works for those who listen to advice from people who have been there. I don't have anything to sell you all. And before any of you gets fresh, I don't have anything to sell you as far as a program, as far as a school, as far as credentials, I don't have anything to sell you there. I do have services that I do provide. However, my calendar is currently booked and I am not taking any new clients until September of 2024. That's how booked I am. But I want you guys to understand this. When you are getting into this field, there's a lot of helps out there. Like there's YouTube with all of the anatomy videos and medical terminology videos. I was on LinkedIn earlier and I almost fell down a rabbit hole <laughs> uh, because uh, there's this, I follow a couple of orthopedic surgeons and I like when they're doing like, well, what would you do? What would you do? I did this, but what would you do? And then they start sharing ideas. I like reading their comments because then they start talking doctor. They start talking doctor without having to change what they're trying to say because they're talking to somebody who's like a civilian, right? And me being a civilian because I'm not a doctor, right? But because, um, you know, doctors are going to talk to you differently because they know they can't use all these advanced medical terms. If you are not in the medical field, they know they can't use these big advanced terms on you. They have to change the way that they're talking. But when you take that element out and you hear them or you read what they're saying based on doctors having conversations with doctors, then you get that pure sense of what they're trying to say. And even though a lot of it may go over your head, the more you expose your brain and your mind to that, oh, this, it's, it's so awesome because things start to make more sense, especially if you become a surgery coder and you start coding for these surgeries and you're like, that makes sense. I know what they're doing here. And then that's when you get to learn how to spot the holes in the documentation. You know how to query and send out an appropriate query and that kind of thing. So it gets very exciting and that's the puzzle part and that's the part where you're really like diving in. And that's the thing that I love. You know, I always say, again, you know, we have to know what doctors know while never having gone to medical school. I like to listen to them and listen to them the way that they are the most natural. Because again, you know, they don't have to change how they're explaining it to me. They can, they're speaking to each other. And I like, I like being like that. <laughs> just, just you know, the little 
third party that's just listening, you know. Uh, but I watched the video and I was, you know, li reading the discourse in the comments and I was just like, this is really awesome. So <laughs> I followed a new uh, surgeon on uh, LinkedIn. But, you know, all that aside, there's all of these videos out there, guys. So if when you are studying and maybe it gets a little boring to you, and you want to check out some of these surgeries, you can put in the name of any surgery. Maybe you, you see a surgery in, um, in the workbook and you're not quite familiar with what it is, put it into YouTube and you'll see a bunch of surgeries pop up that you can watch and you can actually see what's happening. And then you can start getting exposure to those terms and you can start getting exposure to like the industry and what it's, what it sounds like and what it is. And that's that immersive um, learning and it's so helpful for some people especially people like me who love who love that <laughs> you know and trying to get myself into that to that right head space to be able to study and it's the same thing that you got to do but you have to stop with the oh I want to get it done in six months because yes you you may be able to get it done in six months and you may be able to pass a test and you know because you're a really good test taker but does it mean that you're competent does it mean that you understand what's happening? Because when you go out there and you're applying for these jobs, they're going to give you an assessment test. They give you that assessment test. And then if you, again, if you don't know, it's going to show up really fast on those assessment tests. And that's why some people just do not get hired because they thought that they could shortcut their way to be able to get through these tests really quickly and get through these schools really fast. And then when they find out that they're not competent to do the work, do you think that that employer is going to hire them? Likely no. Because again, if you are not coming in, you can come in with no experience all you want to, right? I did. A bunch of other people do. <laughs> you can come in with no experience at all because I had zero experience. I didn't want anything to do with the medical field when I first started. But even though I came in with no experience, I still made sure that I studied so that I could at least understand and at least get a good grade on these assessment tests when I, you know, applied with the, with the place, wherever I was going. And then when you do that and you show your competency, they may say, okay, well, they missed a couple, but we can work with this. I would rather work with somebody that shows promise than somebody who completely doesn't do well on the test at all. And we can't really help them because they need more help than we can provide. Because by the time you're looking for a job, that employer needs employees. <laughs> they need employees to be able to save them and to be able to get the work done. Because these are very, there's a lot of time restrictions on things, you know. So that's why you want to make sure that, you know, you're you're still studying. You have to still study even though you've passed your, your test. Because I've seen that too. People tell me, oh, Blue, I passed my certification a year ago. And um, I've been applying and now they gave me a test and I don't know what to do. What do you mean you don't know what to do? You mean you got your, your certification last year and you haven't been studying? Well, you have to still study. The more you don't study, the further you get away from studying, you'll lose all that. But the good news is it'll come back to you like riding a bike. All you have to do is start studying again. So let me leave, let me leave you guys with that. If you stop studying, you got your certification a little while ago, make sure that you go back and you start studying again because it is possible to get a job in coding. It doesn't matter what anybody says. Don't listen to these naysayers because it is possible. I know because people tell me all the time. And I try to post those comments that I get as much as I can. I try not to post them all because, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of comments that come in. And talking about how they're able to get a job and thank me because, you know, I, I encourage them to study and to one person. <laughs> one guy goes, oh, thank you, Blue, because you told me don't be lazy. I, I don't know that I said that, but I'm like, okay. You know? <laughs> uh, but I think I said it in general in one of the videos that it's lazy if you don't, um, if you don't study like you should, you know. And it's, you have to learn to do your research. I think I said something like that. I have to do your research and, you know, do that kind of thing. Uh, but he said that it worked because now he has a job as a coder with no experience. With no experience. I'm just saying. So, with that said, 
I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up, but that's the reality of it. 20 hours per week, nine months, 12 months, or 18 months to learn this. You can't learn it any faster than that. And if you do, it's just too fast. And you are the exception and not the rule. Okay? You are the exception and not the rule. All right. So with that said, I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.